Uh, my name is Joe Kent. I'm the Executive Vice President of the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, which is a nonprofit research organization that seeks to educate folks about the, the um, values of individual liberty, economic freedom, and accountable government. And um, we, we are actually in this building, um, thanks to Ken Schoolin, professor at Hawaii Pacific University. Uh, he's an economic professor extraordinaire here in the island. So. Um, and thanks to you for coming to Hawaii just to uh, listen to my little talk here. I'm sure you've done a lot more than that, but uh, I want to talk today about the issues of homelessness and housing in Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii is kind of a poster child for a lot of these issues, so it's a great place to research this. Um, and just to let everyone know, this is just uh, one perspective. There are many perspectives on all these issues, uh, but we want to give you our perspective, um, looking at things from a lens of individual liberty, economic freedom, and accountable government. So Hawaii uh, has the highest cost of living in the United States. Um, you can see here we're at the top, and your dollars in Hawaii do not go as far as on the mainland. So right off the bat, um, if you're homeless, if you're struggling to make it, um, you're at a disadvantage if you live in Hawaii. Um, 100, there's a study done that $100 in Hawaii only buys about $84 worth of goods. Uh, so it's, and I'm sure if you've been to the grocery store, if you haven't been to the grocery stores yet, go to the grocery stores, don't go to the beach, and you'll get sticker shock, and that's really the best education that you can get here. Uh, things are very expensive. Um, now, most of that cost has to do with the high cost of housing. Uh, Hawaii also has the highest housing costs in the nation. The median price for a single family house uh, on Oahu is a million dollars. Um, same thing on Maui, same thing on Kauai. Um, the Big Island is less expensive, but still very expensive. So. Um, this, by the way, is um, a, uh, a house. It's just like right down the road from where I live. It's a random house. It's not a special house that I tried to find. Uh, it's a million dollar home um, here on Oahu. It's a two bedroom, one bathroom, 500 square foot home. 500 square feet. 500 square feet. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, and, and it's, yeah, it's kind of like an apartment. And, and it's surrounded, all these homes are a million dollars. So like I said, it's not a special case or anything. Um, I made a, a TikTok video uh, the other day where I went to my mother-in-law's house and um, I just filmed myself and said, hey, this is a million dollar home in Hawaii. And it got a million views because <laughs> people were just shocked. Uh, I won't show that video here. but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that has led to homelessness, um, and it's, it's worsened the problem of homelessness. And in Hawaii, um, we have four different types of homelessness, um, so it's not all just one category. You've got the transitional homeless, which are those that have just maybe lost a job, or uh, maybe they've become divorced. Um, they're in a situation uh, that's transitory, and they're transitioning to find um, permanent housing. You have episodic homelessness, which are those folks that find themselves homeless um, maybe two, three times a year, um, and maybe they have um, substance abuse issues and things like that. Then there's the chronic homelessness, which is, makes up 23% of our homeless in Hawaii, and th those are the folks who um, have serious mental health issues or serious debilitating um, disabilities or, or um, drug issues. So, and then there's a fourth category of the hi hidden homeless, which are those folks that uh, may be staying on their, their family or friend's couch. They're kind of surfing and trying to get by. Uh, they're not counted in the numbers, so that's why we call them the hidden homeless. So in Hawaii, we, the vast majority are those that are in the transitional or episodic homelessness. Um, and maybe in the, the hidden, but uh, chromeless, chronic homelessness is also a huge problem as well. Homelessness in Hawaii has, has gone down, it's gotten better um, in the past few years, amazingly. Um, in 2016, Hawaii had the highest homelessness rate in the nation. 
Um, and since it's gone down, we've, we've um, seen about 1,000. You can't really read that. That's about 5,000 uh, people counted as homeless in 2016, 2017. And now we're down to 3,900. Um, so that's about 1,000 people um, that are no longer homeless, apparently. And that's been partly due to um, the work of nonprofits and governments trying to address this problem. Uh, there's a lot of money in Hawaii that's been kind of um, thrown at this issue. And it has helped, actually. Um, but there are, oh yeah, and by the way, here's, here's another chart that shows people exiting homelessness. And these are folks that are uh, finding permanent supportive housing. Every year, they're, they're leaving the, the homelessness ranks. So th this, these are all good signs. Um, but, Joe, yeah. Sure, would you mind uh, the back one more slide? Yeah, sure. The mm -hmm. red line is going up. What's that? When you say unsheltered. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, the unsheltered actually is raising. That's true. And then the, the sheltered is, is lowering down here. So there's, there's a lot going on with the numbers. Um, and, and the pandemic really um, screwed things up with the numbers, too, because um, there, there were a lot of homelessness declarations and emergency proclamations and uh, money, federal, federal aid money sh thrown at the issue too. So, um, but shelter space is going down though. So that's a big problem too. And that's why you see the sheltered numbers going down. Um, here again, we've got the housing, go um, people leaving homelessness going up. And we'll talk more about that too. Um, but there's another group here, besides just homeless, that are in a tenuous situation. And those are folks that do have a home, but they are unable to um, meet their basic needs. Uh, they're maybe one paycheck or two paychecks away from becoming homeless. And those are folks we call the Alice population here. That makes up about 33%. Uh, the federal poverty line, uh, which is at 9%, that's um, maybe a family of four making $26,000, they would be considered in the, f the official federal poverty guidelines of, of poverty. But in Hawaii, if you make more than $26,000 with a family of four, you're not considered in poverty. <laughs> Even though in Hawaii, the cost of living, uh, you still are in poverty, actually. So... Um, so this group here, these are folks that make between $26,000 and $90,000 for a family of four. Um, and they have to struggle with um, some basic costs. Um, these are the basic monthly household costs in Hawaii for a family of four. About $1,200 goes to taxes every month. Then there's childcare at $1,300 every month and housing costs for about $1,600. And these are the basic costs. So $1,600 on Oahu uh, will get you a studio, <laughs> a one bedroom if you're lucky. Um, maybe if you live you know, far from the city core, you could find a one bedroom or if you're lucky, a two bedroom. But, um, but these are not big houses. So for a family of four squeezing into a small house like that, that's um, very difficult. Um, so you see, housing is a huge factor contributing to um, you know, the, the problems in Hawaii of the cost of living. And that has led to a huge population decline. People are leaving the islands. Uh, you'd think, well, why would anyone leave Hawaii, right? But um, people are leaving in droves. Um, since 2016, on net, 22,000 people, locals, have left and moved away. And it's been a phenomenon if you go on social media or, um, I mean, even on our, our, our Facebook page and look at all our blog posts, um, people are commenting, that's it, I'm out of here. And, and so we started asking them, uh, we asked 50 of them why they are leaving and to tell us their story. And so this is Nate Hara. He said he was born in Waimea, Kauai, raised in Hilo, living in Hawaii until he was 26 years old. Uh, 26. The cost of living, continuous raising of taxes and fees, and the state's need to control everything has led my family and me moving to Texas. 
In order for my fa family and I to move back, we would need to see change that betters the hardworking local people. He said, reward people for their hard work. And that's him and his, daughters, or, uh, his daughter and son there. Um, here's another one, Michael Cheney. He said he was born in Kahuku, raised in Haula, uh, lived in Hawaii for 26 years. Uh, it was a hard decision to move out of Hawaii because Hawaii was all I knew. If you don't have a steady job and you're just starting out as a family, it will be a struggle far beyond what people can imagine. Um, and like I said, there's been uh, at least 50 people that we personally reached out to and just said, tell us your story. But it's a phenomenon. Um, they did a survey and found that 47% are considering leaving because of the cost of living. You've got, and 15% um, said because there's more job opportunities on the mainland, and 10% said housing is too expensive. So, um, so as you can see, the costs are kind of spiraling, and they're causing this flight from Hawaii, which is um, making a lot of problems worse. We have a huge teacher shortage in Hawaii. There's about 1,000 teachers that we're missing. Um, we need about a thousand doctors and nurses here, um, so we have a huge shortage of that for medical care. Um, and so a lot of the people who are leaving are those people that we need here in Hawaii. Um, so all of this is to say we have a problem. <laughs> we have a big housing problem. And the question is, why is the problem so bad? Um, so. There are a lot of reasons, there are a lot of factors that make Hawaii's cost of living um, and housing so bad. Um, but number one is housing regulation. We have the highest housing barriers in the nation as well. Um, they did a study, it's um, the Wharton Index, which measures housing regulations by state, and Hawaii scored at the top. We have the highest housing regulations in the nation. Um, Way, way at the top, yeah. Not, I mean, we're, we're a league um, beyond the next. And so um, housing regulation in Hawaii is the main problem, you can say. Um, and it costs 10 years just to get permission to build on average. So it, let's say you're a developer, you want to build a house. On average, um, it'll take you 10 years to get through all the layers of zoning and regulation. And by the end of the 10 years, you still have to build the house. <laughs> so, so that's yeah. just the permission. Yeah. That's in an area that's already zoned residential, it can take 10 years? No, no. So, that's, so I'll get to that. So that's a great point. That's a great question. So um, now let me talk about this, the different layers of housing regulation. There are six layers that um, someone who wants to build housing has to get through in Hawaii. You've got the State Land Use Commission, and that goes to your question. Um, then there's the county plan, then the community plan. And by the way, these plans don't always agree with each other. <laughs> so you have to really read the plan closely. And then there's the county zoning, uh, then the special management area, um, if you're in a special uh, area, which most housing is, by the way. And then you've got the historic district, if you're, if you're lucky or unlucky. Lucky. So, um, so like I said, by the time you get through that, you, you might get permission to build, but then you still have to build the house and then there's costs on top of that. So um, this is the, um, let, let's start with the state, the state Land Use Commission right here. And I'm not going to go through every zone, but we're starting right here at the State Land Use Commission, who says that there are four zones in the state. Um, there's the urban district here which is where, basically where housing can be built. Um, so all of the housing that you see is right here in that, in that 5% of the land. Then you have the conservation district, and of course there's no building there. Um, then you have the agricultural district, which is 47% of the land. And, and there you can have a house, but it has to be one house on one acre. So, um, so that's not really like a neighborhood. That's not really affordable housing. Um, those are really either farms or, or mansions <laughs> in Hawaii. And, and most often in Hawaii, they're mansions, actually. Um, 
and then you have the rural, which is, you know, it's, it's so small. It's, it's basically urban, but a little bit less dense. Um, density, do, do we know what density is? It's basically, you know, how, how many housing units you can put in an area. So, um, so right off the bat, you can see, I mean, if you, if you live in Honolulu, if you're going around Oahu, it seems like we've built on the, every last vestige of land. But actually, um, if you look at the whole state and look at it from a top-down aerial view, uh, we're only building on about 5%. So um, then if you increase, let's say that we were to increase that 5% to 6%, um, that would be a 20% increase in the supply of housing, uh, land available for housing. That, that could build about 100,000 um, homes, for example. Uh, which is double the amount that they say is needed in Hawaii. So just by doing that, you would basically solve the whole housing process uh, problem. Um, but that's very hard to do because it's not very politically popular, but uh, just talking about policies that would work. Now, let's um, hone in on this a little more. On Kauai, the, oh, so on Oahu, like I said, 26% um, of the land is zoned urban. Um, on Kauai, it's about 4%. Maui is 4% as well. And Hawaii Island, the big island, is about 2% um, zoned for urban. So this is what it looks like. All the little black dots that you see, that's the urban <laughs> zones. Um, and most of the, of the land is open space. Here's Kauai. And you can see these little red areas here are the urban zoning. Um, the white area is the agricultural. Um, this green is the conservation lands. Ooh, you can't really see that at all, but this is the big island. Does this have a laser pointer on it? No. Oh, what's that? I don't know. It's okay. I'll just use my finger. So this is... <laughs> You can barely, can anyone see that? It's really faint. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> there's a, oh my goodness. Okay, well, like really basically there's not much. Like there's not much. That, there you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. So this is, this is Hilo right here. And this is Kona. And that's basically it. Um, and then there's, oh, this is Maui, by the way. And you've got um, all these colored bits, yellow and blue, are the urban areas. But like I said, m most of it is open space. Does the urban zoning include where hotels are allowed to be? Yes, allowed? yes, that's Some correct. Of that housing isn't residential. That's right, that's right, exactly. And so, like, just uh, like Professor Beard said, some of the urban zoning is where hotels need to be or where, industri where airports are. Um, and so that's not h housing as well. So even the 5% the, um, of the land here, um, cut that in half, basically, and that's, you know, it's like 2.5% is actually housing in Hawaii. Um, and so if we zoom into Honolulu, so here's Honolulu, uh, Oahu, and, and the red areas here are the urban zoning. Um, I'm going to zoom in right here. So that's, um, let's see, where are we? We are around here, okay? That's, that's where we are. You are here, okay? <laughs> and um, and now, so look at th this purple area. This is like the airport and the industrial zone here, so that's not housing. Um, then you've got the yellow areas up here. Um, this is when you look up into the valley and you see all those housing units up there. That's what that is. And, this, and yellow is single family housing. So that means you can only have one house on a plot of land. So let's say a 5,000 square foot plot, you can have one house with one kitchen, and that's it. Uh, you can't have a duplex, you can't have a fourplex, um, and, and you have to have a parking spot too. Um, so that's all of this housing, it's very low density. And then in the red and brown areas here, that's where you can actually have condominiums and apartments, and things like that, more dense housing. So you can see it's just a sliver of land here. But that, that includes some hotels and stuff. Right? And that includes hotels, which would be down here okay. in this area. Yeah. So, so that, 
yeah, that, that is um, really, you can see the problem is the zoning is um, you know, a, the big factor in making housing costs so high. Um, now, ironically, it's actually easier to build a mansion in Hawaii than it is to build an affordable house. Now, why is that? It's because, again, a mansion fits neatly into the definition of agricultural zoning. One house on one acre, right? And you can see this is Oprah's house on the island of Maui. And it's one house on many, many, many acres. <laughs> but um, it's a mansion. Very easy to build. You don't have to have, go through any public um, testimony. You don't have to go through any hearings. You don't have to go to the State Land Use Commission or the county. You just build the house, basically. Very simple. Um, whereas developers who want to build uh, affordable housing, let's say a neighborhood or a low rise or something like that, they have to go through the public testimony process here. And in Hawaii, it's very contentious. Um, this kills a lot of housing projects. Um, folks come out and say, not in my backyard. And so that, and it's killed so many projects that they, that they call them the NIMBYs, not in my backyard, folks. Um, so a developer, and we've talked to many developers who are going through this in our research, and, and they say, well, when they deny our, our project, we just shrug and say, OK, well, we'll just build a mansion then. And so in that sense, Hawaii's uh, housing regulations are set up to favor the rich, not intentionally, unintentionally. They're, they're meant to favor the poor, but they actually serve the very wealthy. And if you look on Maui, for example, um, you, they, you cannot build a, a house, you can't build a low rise, you can't build a high, there is nowhere to live, there's no place to buy, there's no place to rent. It's just all bought up um, except for the fabulously wealthy. And you've got, that's why you see so many celebrities there. Um, so I wish you guys could go to Maui, actually. Maybe you should convince your teacher. <laughs> um, OK, so what can be done about the problem? So the Grassroot Institute has researched this and tried to figure out, what can we do? Obviously, there's the 5% to 6% thing. That's good. But what are, what are some other solutions? Well, let's look at some different areas. We're going to look at Minnesota, Oregon, California, and Tokyo. Now, in Minnesota, where I'm from originally, um, they, and this is Minneapolis, they um, passed a law that basically took all of the single-family zoning areas and allowed more density. So you can have a duplex in a single-family zone. Uh, you can have a threeplex and so on. They also got rid of the parking mandates. And not every house, not every apartment needs a parking space. Some don't. And some only need one. You know, you don't need three. Maybe you need only one. And so that um, has allowed for the development of more housing in that area. Um, Oregon, uh, Portland uh, learned from that. And in 2020, passed a law very similar and basically said, let's allow for more development to fill in uh, between the homes. Now, if you like your home, you can keep your home. <laughs> so you don't have to do it. But if you want to, you can. Or if your neighborhood wants to, they can. So, but everyone has to agree. Same thing in California. This is last year, 2021. They passed SB9, and that allows duplexes and split lots in the single family zoning areas. For so, state, for the whole state, yes. And that's a, a crazy concept because, um, you know, these, before I was just talking about, you know, cities, but this is the whole state. How did they get around Euclid? Oh, I don't know about that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I know that there are a lot of um, litigation about this at the county levels because the counties say, well, um, you know, this is our, um, you know, th this is our county. You can't tell us what to do. But the state is saying, no, we can tell you what to do. And so this is, there's a lot of um, court cases popping up about this right now. But in any case, this is what they passed in California. 
So, and then now um, we're going to go all the way to Tokyo, and which shows um, that basically if you allow housing, which Tokyo did, they allowed all types of housing. You can have a high rise next to a little house. You can, you can do all kinds of things there. And that has eased housing prices. Here, um, this is, these are housing prices in Tokyo since 2000 that have basically remained steady. Whereas in San Francisco and New York, uh, housing prices have gone straight up or sky, sky, skyrocketed. Um, and so what we say is uh, follow the Tokyo model. <laughs> and in Hawaii, uh, there are a lot of people here from Japan and from Asia. And, and uh, so that's kind of like what we're trying to talk about right now. Uh, we have a few reports that we've written about. We've got uh, reform the land use commission to encourage more housing. And basically, uh, one thing that lawmakers have talked about doing is abolishing the state land use commission. Just get rid of it. Um, a lot of the things that they do at the state land use commission are dupli duplicative at the county level. So you get through the state land use commission, and then yeah, you have to do the same thing at the county level. Um, so they're saying, well, why do you have to do that? Just get rid of the, the state. Um, then another one uh, a report that we have is build up or build out. And that's a big question a lot of times in Hawaii. Should we build up or should we build out? Um, and our answer is, let's do both. <laughs> um, but um, building out, according to this report, is the easiest way to do it, uh, but maybe not the easiest politically. Then there's a report by the, um, the State Policy Network that's published on our website. And it has 50 different ways to reform zoning. And uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but, um, but basically, it's just al allow more zoning in the technical minutia of county code. That's basically what this says. So you could reduce parking requirements. You could reduce uh, political approvals. Um, if you have the right to zone, if your project comports with the, the um, zoning laws, then you should just be able to do it by right. Um, allow higher densities, like in single family, ending single family zoning. Outsource the permitting department to a private company. Um, and, and that has shown success in Houston and Sandy Springs, Georgia. In fact, I went to Sandy Springs, Georgia, and um, and you could get a permit through the department or through the private um, company in about one or two days. Um, it was pretty quick. Whereas in Hawaii, it takes maybe a year. And then they implemented a new system, a computerized system to speed things up. And so now it takes two years. So <laughs> <laughs> they call it the epic system, and, and we call it the epic failure. But yeah. Uh, yeah, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, so the people in the yeah, mm -hmm. the Alice Seriously. group, right? Um, they're living like almost paycheck to paycheck on their housing, and you were saying about how there's a um, like, the, I think it says a lot of neighborhoods to upzone their blocks, like put in more houses. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the people in that Alice um, thing would like it for their for that to happen because that would drive the price of their houses down. But the people that aren't living paycheck to paycheck, the people that want their house to be more expensive so they can sell it, they hate that, right? Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Uh, it's very perceptive because let's, say, let's just talk about the 5% to 6%. Um, those people who have a home may not see their home appreciate as much. Um, they may actually see it go down as more supply hits the market. Um, and depending on interest rates and everything, you might see prices take a dive. So absolutely, that could be a big problem. And so politically, that's the issue, is the people who need the housing don't show up at the political process. And the people who don't need the housing do show up at the political process. And so you have uh, you know, the, the unspoken masses that um, you know, don't have a voice in this problem. But how do you go to the zoning meetings when you have to work three jobs right, and right. take care of all your Exactly, exactly. I know. So, so often I'll go to the zoning meetings and, mm -hmm. and testify on behalf of all those people that can't make it. But, uh, you know, I'm, see, I'm viewed skeptically as well. It's like, oh, who are you? 
You know, are you really a developer? It's like, no, no, I'm just a nerd. You know, so just don't be afraid. <laughs> so, exactly, right. <laughs> So anyways, I won't go through all of these, um, but you can see, and, and if you'd like to learn more, this is a fantastic report to, to go through. Um, and again, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're trying to do this so that more locals can afford a life in the islands and uh, not have to move away. Um, so there's more to talk about and discuss. I can go a lot of different directions, uh, but uh, that's it, yeah.